Hi, in this short tutorial, we're going to talk about the census and explain what exactly the census is. If you're taking my Geography 2020 classes, we cover the census in detail, as it's going to tie in with your demography courses and other community-based uh, data courses as part of your social work program. However, if you're taking my other GIS courses or even my other geography courses, I want us to get familiar with the census to some extent and what all these census data mean, how we can download them, how we can access them, and turn them into GIS data in other presentations that I'm going to show later. But here, we're just going to talk about what the census is. As you can see here, as we look at the web page, if we go to www.census.gov, you can see what the census is. There's a lot of different things going on here, and we're going to go through these a little bit. As you can see here, the census is a comprehensive data collection effort here that covers business information, information about people, economic information, demographic information, anything that you can think of about people we have, anything where we can get data. And we're going to talk a lot about how do we go through and get this data and turn it into a GIS compatible format here. The whole goal of the census way back in the day was to figure out the apportionment for the House of Representatives. In the United States, we have the Senate. Each state is represented by two U.S. Senators. However, in the House of Representatives, the number of representatives by state is dependent upon the population of that particular state right here. And you can see right here for 2010, we can see the apportionment for the U.S. House of Representatives from the 2010 census. We have a decennial census that's taken in every 10 years. So we have a 2010 census, we had a 2000, 1990, so forth and so on, beginning with the first one in 1790 here. And we use this we use the population information from 2010 to figure out how, ma how many people are going to represent each state in the House of Representatives because we, have, because we have 435 total representatives. So if one state is going to gain a particular house, gain someone in the House, well obviously another state's going to have to lose some so we can keep that proportionality in uh, that 435 people intact there. And you can see here the changes between 2000 and 2010. The states in blue, Texas, Florida, South Carolina, Georgia, Arizona, Utah, Nevada, and Washington all gain people in the House of Representatives. All of these other states here in green lost. And all of these ones here in gray that you can see of which North Carolina is a part, they didn't gain nor lose any. You can see here New York actually lost two, house, two seats in the House of Representatives, but it didn't actually lose people between 2000 and 2010. It just didn't gain population as fast as these other states, so their proportion of population dictated that they lose two seats. I think there were only one or two states that actually lost population between 2000 and 2010. I know one of those was Michigan. The other one might have been Louisiana down here as a result of the outmigration after Hurricane Katrina, but I'm not sure on that one here. So you can see what we have here. When we look at the census data website, and you can see my focus in my GIS course is on data. Where do we get data? What can we do with the data? How do we turn it into a GIS compatible format? There's lots of excellent data sources out there. But for some of my introductory courses here and the introductory exercises that I'm offering my classes, it's to just to familiarize yourself with some of these things that are going on here. You can see in the new room we have new publications, tip sheets, multimedia, um, some of the research that's going on here. But some of the neat things that we do have here are quick facts. Okay, and we can look at different facts about a particular state and we can look at some of the basic information that collected. Okay, I can select a state here. You can see I'm looking at New York right here. Uh, it's got about 19 million people. Let me go through and look at North Carolina here. I can go to an interactive map and click on North Carolina and you can see what I have right here. You can see the population estimate for 2011 is about 9,656,000. In 2010, it was 9,535,000. You can see how it is in the USA compared to North Carolina in the left-hand column here. You can see how it was in 2000. Okay, you can see the percentage of people. One of the problems or one of the challenges that we have in working with some census data is that it gives us data in raw format. I think some of the things that we want to work at is look at percentages here. Okay, percentage white, percentage black here, American uh, Indian, Asian white, non-Hispanic, all of these, instead of working with these raw data here. Uh, mean travel time to work, and this is just some of the information that's collected via the census. We're going to go through and look at, in other tutorials, some things that are collected a lot more in detail. Country of origin, 
how many people speak English in a particular household, average household size. And the table you can imagine would be very, very big if we had these. And you, we can look at the total land area here. We have something here called the FIPS code, we'll talk about later, how we uniquely identify enumerations at the county, sub-county, uh, and the sub-county level here. Here I can click on my county here. And let me look at Durham County. I have Durham. And you can see my population for 2011 here, it was 267,000 here. Population change from 2010. Uh, 2000 to 2010 was 19.8 percent. We could look at some of these different indicators with Durham County versus the state of North Carolina. We can look at high school graduates, 86.3 percent versus 83.6 percent. Bachelor's degrees, percentage of people aged 25 and plus with a bachelor's degree in this county is 44.1 compared to 26.1 for the rest of North Carolina. Mean travel time to work is a little bit lower. Okay, home ownership rate is 55.6% versus 68.1%. And you can imagine having universities such as Duke and North Carolina Central located within county probably affect these a little bit. Okay, we can also click on cities here. Okay, we can click on Durham City. So we saw here at 267,000. Now we can actually click on the city here. And you can imagine it's going to be a little bit less. Okay, because we have that outline area in Durham County here, which includes cities of Durham, uh, Morrisville, But uh, Butner, Raleigh, and even parts of Chapel Hill are located within Durham County here. But we have these here that we can go through and look at. Okay, we have a lot of other information here, and I'll sh we'll go through and look at this a little bit here. Okay, when we go to the Census Bureau website here, we have people, we have data. Okay. We have the quick facts right here. We go down a little bit further here. We can look at some of the census news here. We can look at the population finder. It tells us right now there's 313,821,473 people compared to just over 7 billion people in the United States. Obviously, this is more of an estimate right here. Another neat thing we can look at is the population, the 2010 census. There's a lot of good information about the census that we have here. We can look at something here called a population, uh, a sec, uh, age sex pyramid right here. Okay, this is very neat. We can look at some of these state profile maps here. So we can get, a co get an idea as to what the actual composition looks like here. Okay, let's click on one of these here. Let's look at one for, say, Alaska. Okay, and this is a nice map that we have right here. It shows up here, okay. but it's pretty neat here. Okay, we have a map here that shows them by census tract. Okay, you can see some of these census tracts in uh, Alaska are extremely large here. But we have the age sex pyramid over here. I thought it was kind of interesting when we go through and look at it here, where that we have males. Okay, as we on this axis right here, our x-axis, we have the number of people, or in some places, the percentage of people. As we move up, we look at the age. So as you can imagine, as we go further and further up, this is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller because people are going to die off. And you can see here in the 50s and the 60s here, you see this kind of bulge right here, and these are our baby boomers. And then down here, we have a little bit higher bulge here with our males versus our females. You can see there's less than 30,000 females of age 20 and 30 in this area, a lot more than 30,000 for this area. So you can see industries such as fishing or perhaps mining or petroleum engineering or whatnot that are going to attract people to this particular area here. So we can get an idea as to what the people look like in these particular areas here. Okay. But in conclusion here, you can see we can look at the 2010 census data, some very interesting stuff here. Pretty much, and we can go back to some historical census that we talk about in my class here. But in conclusion here, there's a lot of good information from the census. I strongly recommend that you go through and look at this. We have information about business, people, economics, employment, lots of different things that you pay for as the American, American taxpayer pay for. There's a lot of information out there. I hope you can take advantage of it.